Warning, this experiment produces toxic gases and products and uses corrosive chemicals. This must be performed outside or in a fume hood and gloves must be worn. Greetings fellow nerds. In this video we're going to make hydrazine sulfate, a useful salt of hydrazine that's safer and easier to handle than the pure liquid hydrazine itself. We're going to use the hypochlorite ketazine process. Although the yield is not as high as some other methods, I prefer it because it's fairly easy, robust, and very reliable. First we start with 250 milliliters of concentrated ammonia solution. I'm using a 30% solution, but this will also work with lower concentrations at the cost of some yield. Now add directly to it 100 milliliters of methyl ethyl ketone. This is available in hardware stores as a cleaning solvent. Stir the ammonia and ketone vigorously for about 10 minutes to thoroughly mix them. Now while it's still stirring, add in a quarter mole equivalent of sodium hypochlorite solution also known as chlorine bleach. I'm using a 10% solution so I'm adding in 186 grams. This reaction also works very well with 6% household bleach, but you'll need to use more, around 300 grams. Add the bleach slowly as it's going to produce a lot of gases, mostly nitrogen and ammonia and some traces of chloramine and hydrazine, so this must be performed in a fume hood or outside. Occasionally cover it and let it react, and then add bleach again when it stops bubbling. Now it might seem insane that we're purposely mixing together bleach and ammonia, two chemicals that we all know should never be mixed. But as long as we add the bleach to the ammonia slowly, use a massive excess of ammonia, and avoid inhaling the gases by performing this in a fume hood, we can be fairly safe. What's happening is that sodium hypochlorite bleach is reacting with the ammonia and methyl ethyl ketone to form sodium chloride salt and methyl ethyl ketazine. This actually goes in a multi-step process, but I'm just simplifying it here. Once all of the bleach is added, continue to vigorously stir the mixture until it stops bubbling. This takes about 10 minutes or so. The cloudiness is actually really small droplets of methyl ethyl ketazine along with some methyl ethyl ketone. Stop stirring and let the mixture separate into two layers. This is very slow since the droplets are so small, so I've time lapsed over two hours. Don't start the next step until both layers are completely clear. Here we are. You can see the layer of methyl ethyl ketazine floating at the top like oil. I'm using a separatory file to separate the two layers as the ketazine is all we want. If you don't have one of these, you'll have to improvise or very carefully decant the ketazine. Okay, here's the ketazine. Now we convert to hydrazine sulfate. First start with 100 milliliters of water and a stir bar. Then with stirring, add in 20 milliliters of concentrated 98% sulfuric acid. The solution will heat up a lot. Now get the methyl ethyl ketazine and pour the sulfuric acid solution directly into it while it's still hot. Stir it to dissolve the ketazine as it's very soluble and reactive with the acid. What's happening is the hot acidic solution hydrolyzes the ketazine and converts it to hydrazine sulfate and methyl ethyl ketone again. You can see the solution get cloudy. This is hydrazine sulfate crystallizing out. Keep stirring until the solution cools down to room temperature on its own. This takes about an hour or so. The vacuum filter out the hydrazine sulfate and pull air through it for about an hour to dry it on the frit. Transfer hydrazine sulfate to a container, and there you have it. Pure hydrazine sulfate. To test it, put equal quantities of silver nitrate and hydrazine sulfate in separate vials. Then add just enough ammonia to completely dissolve both of them. Mix them together, and after about 10 minutes a silver mirror will form on the inside of the vial. You can also perform a redox titration with iodine for purity. I found my hydrazine sulfate to be better than 95% pure. And that's how you make hydrazine sulfate by the hypochlorite ketazine process. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and comment. Now for some additional notes. What I showed you was the crude method that gave me a yield of about 40% based on hypochlorite. For you advanced chemists, there are a few improvements to squeeze out an extra 10 to 20% yield. First, 200 milligrams of unflavored gelatin could be added to the ammonia at the beginning and stirred in. Second was to do the reaction while chilled in ice, and third was to add the bleach very slowly dropwise from an addition funnel. 
These three things help to reduce side reactions and increase yield. The drawback is that things happen so much slower and the separation of the layers takes overnight. Once that's all done, after adding in the sulfuric acid solution to the ketazine, another improvement was to gently heat the solution up to 85 degrees Celsius. This caused the methyl ethyl ketone byproduct to boil off as an azeotrope with water and drive the reversible reaction to completion due to the loss of one product from one side. After about an hour of heating, another improvement was to directly chill the solution with ice to zero Celsius. The colder temperature helped to squeeze more crystals out of the solution. Then after filtration, the filtrate itself still had a bit of ketazine in it, so it could be reheated to further hydrolyze it. This was chilled and filtered again. The process was repeated until no more hydrazine sulfate could be produced. Overall, I could get up to 60% yield based on hypochlorite. But considering all that hassle, I preferred the crude approach and just used more of the cheap chemicals. Now on a completely different note with the reagents, I know that methyl ethyl ketone is not universally available. Acetone could be used instead, but the problem is that the acetone azine produced is completely soluble in water. It doesn't cleanly phase separate like methyl ethyl ketazine. So to get it out, a fractional distillation has to be done as acetone azine forms a low boiling azeotrope with water at 95 Celsius. 50 milliliters of acetone is used initially, and so 150 milliliters of liquid needs to be distilled to ensure all the acetone azine is collected. Hydrolysis is done this time with an additional 30 milliliters of water and 20 milliliters of sulfuric acid. Hydrolysis of acetone azine is very slow and repeated heating, cooling, and filtration is needed. Once again keep repeating until no more crystals come out. The total yield was in the 40 to 50 percent range. Instead of distillation, I also tried extraction using toluene and absorption into the acid but repeated extractions, about 5, were necessary to get comparable yields. Overall, I think the acetone method was too much work and methyl ethyl ketone was worth going the extra mile to get some, even if you have to order it online. A lot of people have asked me about pure liquid hydrazine. It can be made from hydrazine sulfate by mixing it with a stoichiometric amount of base and distilling off the hydrazine. Additional drying might be necessary. Now this must be done under inert atmosphere conditions because pure hydrazine is quite dangerous and highly flammable. I won't be doing this because I don't need pure hydrazine. Only attempt this yourself if you have the proper equipment and some experience in inert atmosphere distillations. As for other methods of making hydrazine, another major one is the peroxide ketazine process where hydrogen peroxide is used instead of bleach. It needs a catalyst or two to get it to work. Now since good hydrogen peroxide is harder to get than bleach for the amateur chemist, I don't think I'll be trying it. This video took over a month to produce because originally I was all ready to go with another method involving the Hoffman rearrangement on urea and had filmed 30 hours worth of video on it. The idea is to react urea with bleach and sodium hydroxide and then perform a workup with hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acids to obtain hydrazine sulfate. A modification to the process involved the direct use of chlorine gas instead of bleach. In any case, the overall process took a number of steps, and I'll be honest, I never got a very good yield and the reproducibility was a big issue. Nonetheless, I have to thank the original posters of the Hoffman rearrangement process on a message board called sciencemadness.org. By the way, they are a great science board with high level discussions in all kinds of chemistry topics. Just note that this is definitely higher level chemistry done by experienced and seasoned chemists, many of which have professional ties. If you think I'm good, they're much better. They probably looked out on me. Ah oh well. I'll post a link to their board and a specific thread on hydrazine in my video description. They claim their method is the best and easiest for amateurs, so you can check it out for yourself.